Hey guys, how's it going? Nick here with another Cinema 4D tutorial. Today I'm going to be covering, um, well, the hair object within Cinema 4D. So I'm going to be going over some different looks that you can get with some hair and um, some important tips and tricks to creating realistic hair. Like, um, I just made this one quickly here. So we're going to start off make a new file quickly. We're going to throw a sphere in there. And I'm just going to um, make the camera angle a little bit better, like so. And now, the first thing that we're going to do when we're working with hair is we need to add hair. So if we come over here to simulate, and we go down to hair objects, when we have our sphere selected, we'll click add hair and it's going to add the hair right onto our sphere. So all these little lines here, these are our guides. So if I go ahead and render real quick, it does not look like hair whatsoever. If you leave everything on default and you click uh, the play button, I'm just going to make my timeline a little bit longer, um, the hair has natural forces that Cinema 4D assigns to it, so it actually uh, falls with gravity. So now if we go ahead and render, the hair is all drooped down over. You can notice that um, it is still pretty thin. There's not enough hair. So if I come over here to the hair tab or the hair object and I go to hairs, it's set to 5,000. I'm just going to set this to 20,000 for now. And when we render, it takes a tiny bit longer, but makes it look much better. Everything else in here is, uh, I usually don't touch it very much. There's the dynamics, you can set um, how fast you want it to fall, if you want it to be rigid, if you don't want it to move, uh, how many guides you want to see, so these these little blue lines. Um, yeah, you can set a bunch of stuff, but usually I don't worry too much with it. And when you do create a hair object, you automatically create a hair material in the editor. So if I just go ahead and double click that to open up our material editor, uh, you can see all of the different options here. Lots of them are pretty self-explanatory, like you get length, uh, frizz, um, if you have kinks in your hair, if, uh, if some are clumped together. Yeah, so you can set the thickness. Usually the thickness is pretty good for me right now, just for simulating real hair. Um, specular is where the light hits that's kind of like the shine off the hair and color um, you can really set this to any color you want before I had kind of like a blondish color someplace like oh. yeah, it was someplace at the top it was in between brown and brown and reddish or brown and yellow and I just said it so right now it just looks like a glowing ball of mess but the biggest thing that you have to think about with hair that makes it look realistic is the lighting that goes with the scene so I'm gonna show you a quick tip here on how to set up a few little lights in Cinema 4D that's gonna change the look of this completely. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a light real quickly. It's the first little light bulb here. And then I'm going to pull this one forward, off to the side, and up a little bit. So it's lighting up this top side of our sphere. And if I go ahead and render, it doesn't change much. It makes it look less um, so bright. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Shadow Map Soft on. And that's going to create shadows through the hair. And it improves immediately. It looks a thousand times better. The hair looks way, way better. As soon as I turn Shadow Map Soft off, it goes back to being this ball of craziness. So we'll put that on and instantly it looks way, way better. Now, our second light. So I'm going to go ahead and add another one. This one is going to be um, 
it's going to act as kind of like a highlight. So I just want to put it off to the back and close to the side, just close enough where I can start to see the, um, the light shining on this side of the sphere. And this light is going to bring our highlight from the background, so I usually just crank it up to about 200. And now it looks really bad again, but that's just because we had Shadow Map Soft off on our new light. So if we go ahead and put that back on, re-render it, you can see this side of our hair has a nice glow to it now. I'm actually going to lower it down to 175 just for right now. I'm going to tuck it in a little bit more so that light is just peeking around that side of the sphere. Like that. And then the last light, I'm going to add one on the bottom to shine upwards. And that's just going to be a uh, kind of like a filler light, I guess you can call it. I'm just going to push it down and bring it forward a tiny bit so that we can see it there. And I'm just going to set the intensity to 50. When you click on the light, the bar of intensity is there. And once again, shadow map soft. So now when I come back into here and I click render, we got our hair. So it looks pretty boring and everything. So if we come into the material editor, now we can start playing around with um, all the different options. So thickness, it gives us two options. This is the root, so what's coming out of the sphere and this is where it ends. If you make this uh, the same width as the root, you get these these thick strands, which I personally don't really like. So I'm just going to keep it at point 0.1. It is a little bit long, so I'm going to click length, and I'm just going to bring it down 75%. And that should shorten up our hair a little bit and give it some layer some texture and now I'm just gonna run through some of these other little options with you so if I turn frizz on and I'm not even gonna touch anything and I just render it you can see all this hair is going everywhere it's going crazy we got our nice highlight coming off the side um, you can obviously lower this down frizz if you go like 10% it won't be nearly as crazy you get some variation in the hair I'll turn that off. If I go uh, kink, it's going to bundle lots of, well, yeah, it's going to kink the hair like super, super little waves in it. Um, clump is what I was thinking about there. If we put clump, and just to really show you guys what this does, if I turn those two to 75, it really bunches up the hair. So the count and the clump is what I had changed on that one. Oops, that's the wrong button. Yes, we want to stop that. So yeah, so if we, that one just bunches up the hairs together. Um, curl, curls the hair, but it kind of makes it a little bit wild. I'm pretty sure it's meant for uh, much longer hairs. This just looks like somebody had a really bad hair day. And then there's a few of these that I, I don't fully know. Like, I feel like wave is just a wave in the hair. I feel like that one's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, add some texture to it. Um, but, yeah, so you can really mess around with some of these and create some some nice little effects um, with the hair. But, like I was saying, the the biggest thing that you got to worry about is the lighting in the scene because if you were to take all of these lights now I'm just gonna highlight all of them and turn off the shadows and re-render this you can see this just looks you can't even tell what that is it's almost blinding so switch back the shadows re-render it it makes a world of a difference so that is basically the biggest thing that you have to worry about when you're dealing with hair is the lighting. You want to have a few different multiple angles and make sure you have those those shadows on. Sometimes this this backlight here is a nice touch 
because it really gives a nice highlight on this side of the hair. Um, but other than that, uh, the whole thing is kind of just trial and error if you want really, really long hair. Let's see how long I can make this if I go like 500. I guess I got to go into the actual hair object. I think this is the one here. If I go in under guides, I don't know if this is just the length of the guides. And we'll stop it right there. We'll render it out. Yeah. So the length of our hair is actually under guides. And you can set this to whatever you like. I can set this to 500. It's going to make crazy long hair. I'm just going to move this back to the beginning. Just going to let this play out so that last little strand falls. We don't have enough time. So I'm just going to add some time. Play it. There we go, that falls. And now we can see it's kind of like a big uh, a big monster. Big fluffy monster here. But yeah, so like I was saying, you just kind of um, you can you can choose, you can kind of go into all these little options, mess around with some things. You could change the color of the hair. Like if I wanted to make it some some crazy some crazy colors here like if I just put this one blue I'll put this one like a darker blue or almost like a purple you re-render it and you get some pretty crazy effects but yeah there's tons of stuff that you can use hair for and um, I honestly think the biggest thing is just the lighting of the scene so if your hair doesn't look good just maybe try to concentrate on your lighting a little bit more and I'm sure it's going to clear it right up. Alright guys, that's going to be everything for this tutorial and I hope to see you guys next time. See ya!